So I also am working across the UAE and Saudi. Um, we're a certified social enterprise, and our mission is to accelerate goal eight by supporting 100,000 students gain access to meaningful education. We've been operating for three years, and we've supported almost 400 students already. But the issue we're facing is we can bring them through graduation, but then we're terminated because there are no jobs for them. Now the majority of them are employable, but nobody will employ them. And we could be talking about kids with very mild to moderate needs. We could be talking about kids with fully accommodating uh, physical disabilities that can be overcome with tiny pieces of the tech, and they're not gaining access to the workforce. Um, my partner, Raza, is the founder of the Global Sustainability Network, and we are working toward accelerating goal across over 100 countries, working with governments and leaders to really make the workforce more accessible. So we're just a tiny part of that bigger picture. Um, but one of the things that we're trying to do, working with Saudi and the UAE government now, is to emulate the success we're seeing by gaining access to education. So we've created a specific model using AI, using really basic support, like learning support assistance, but accessible. And our part of our mission is to keep it accessible so that we don't have families who are paying. But we have a family came to us recently paying 40,000 dollars a month, which is the equivalent of about $10,000 just to access education. Now, I couldn't afford that. I know the majority of people in my, my sphere couldn't afford that. And nobody should have to. And at the end of the day, that child is going to graduate with a qualification that will not facilitate their access to the workforce. So, of what use is it? And that's the biggest issue that we're seeing now. So we have been looking at education, but now, we're looking at the barriers to the workforce and we're hoping that what we're doing will help to break down some of those barriers. And I'm looking at the committee that we're here now. I feel absolutely honoured to be a part of this committee. I see Daniel has just come in and I am really looking forward to working hand in hand to really emulate the success that the, if it, the IFIP has had in Europe. I think we can emulate that in the Middle East. And very soon, because we've got momentum. In Europe, there are a lot of very fixed systems. We've heard from us here today that we don't have those systems, so we can create them. Um, and I think we've a lot to learn and a lot to achieve with the IFIP. I totally agree. Um, I mentioned this before, I was inspired by that. I think we can do it with the IFIP. 